boxes. Right, so here I have quite a few items. This is just some stuff I had in my pack with me up there. Uh, some of it useful, some of it not. Some of it useful, but I didn't like it. I'll get to that later, just for my personal preferences kind of thing. Um, just some ideas maybe for going out on a hiking trip, um, what you want to have. Because um, when I came into this, actually, <laughs> was going into it sort of testing out a long-term survival sort of gear thing. I wanted to see how much I could carry and um, I had a bunch of things in there. So that's why my med kit and stuff had some stuff I'd have for like long-term survival. Like, uh, you know, zombie apocalypse kind of thing, people like that, or shit hits the fan or whatever. Um, but, uh, for hiking, again, probably <laughs> don't want to bring it with you. So if I go hiking again, which I definitely will, not if, but when, um, I'm going to lighten the bag up and I'll probably just keep my um, uh, inch bag or I'm never coming home bag sort of gear in a separate um, system that I can easily load into my rucksack if, you know, I ever had to use it. I'm more just like the fantasy of it kind of thing, you know, like the imagination and uh, it's kind of nice to know your limits and know that if uh, something went horribly askew um, in society or economy or, or whatever, that you'd be able to do all right. Maybe, you know, not uh, thrive, but survive. <laughs> so, <clears throat> we have here a Reliance branded 20 liter foldable uh, water system. Sort of my throat is still really <coughs> sore from yelling and uh, I'm swallowing a lot and making weird sounds like <coughs> chomping sounds. <laughs> we have to bear through that. Um, <clears throat> but that way you know that I actually did go through a fairly good workout and uh, the equipment was tested. <laughs> um, so this guy, super light. I, for, for camping and base camp, we used that and that was great because um, the river was pretty far away. So we basically trekked down to the river, um, filled this thing up. Josh had some of these liquid um, decontaminating uh, droplets. Um, and I've never seen those before. I've only ever seen the tabs you put in. So the, um, the tabs basically you drop into the water and then within half an hour it's clean to drink, things like that. Um, but he had these drops that were faster acting. I believe he said you put in a few drops and then you wait five minutes and then you fill the water halfway up and put in the rest of the drops and it tells you per milliliter or per liter how many drops put in kind of thing and that was really great because we could just <clears throat> top this guy up with water put it in the drops halfway or sorry, put, fill it halfway drops in rest of the way drops in cap it up and this lasted <laughs> way more than the night i think we only drank probably maybe a quarter of it maybe less than that and we had clean water we just worry about just boiling it just for heat, don't have to worry to actually boil it um, to get contaminants out. So we didn't even have to boil it away, just get it heated up uh, for tea and drinks and stuff like that. So that was really nice. Um, I'm actually going to look into getting some of those droplets um, to put in my pack. So Jay, that was a great thing um, that you had those. <laughs> Came in real handy. And uh, yeah, for this, so back at camp, definitely recommend it. Um, if you are hiking to an area where you're not going to be next to a river a lot and it's um, sort of where you're camping is a flat spot and then where the river is is a little bit hard to get to and you're going to camp overnight and you're hiking then yeah bring one along um, for that. Worked well. Um, I didn't really test it a lot. We only used it one night so I don't know how durable it is. I don't know if you know if you screw this on a lot because it is uh, flexible and stuff like that if it's going to strip out and if it's going to last long but it worked well. Um, so if it is durable, 5 out of 5 rating. It holds 20 liters. Um, if it strips out, I guess not so much, but uh, didn't test that one fully. I'll be honest with you guys on that. Uh, I have a really tiny little frying pan. This is the one that we did the um, the hot dogs in the Bacardi 1. Alright, so we're about the uh, camera cut out around our batteries. These batteries are pretty low too, so we can go for this a little bit quicker. Um, yeah, so basically we fried up those hot dogs in the 151 in this. This thing was great. I was afraid the handle would catch on the fire, uh, but it didn't. And this is just a little sort of can't remember who makes it, but I got a Canadian tire, um, and they have some different colors. They're sort of uh, sort of modernist, uh, postmodernist, sort of um, I don't know, little kitschy frying pans. And I bought it because it's lightweight. They're kind of, I guess, if they're in your house, maybe hang a little bit for decoration because they're themed. They have like purple colors and uh, pink colors, black covers, stuff like. That. I actually didn't have black. I wanted black. I tried to get the black one, but it was a dark purple. Um, but the green's all right. I thought it, you know, it was bushy enough. This is the manliest small little girly frying pan I can find. <laughs>
<coughs> uh, have a spoon fork, spork. I guess it has a little bit of a knife, but I wouldn't use that. It's kind of hokey. Um, the metal ones, if you use the knife on there, are probably a lot better than this one. Um, you can use it, but it's plastic. And I don't know, I wouldn't saw with it. Uh, but super lightweight. Love it. I have a... What's this thing here? <clears throat> uh, Brunson branded compass. Uh, nice. Uh, say nice a lot, apparently. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, it has the measurements on it. It has, I believe, both um, imperial and metric. So this side we have centimeters. Uh, on the other side, yeah, we have inches. And this slides out, so you can actually rotate it to be on the other side. So you'll have the um, the imperial on the side of your choice. Uh, it's made in USA. It works well for navigation. Um, and. It is still working for navigation, which is great. I'm still pointing north. <clears throat> uh, has the rotating bearing setting on it, and has the ability to use the mirror and <clears throat> the uh, aim point, so you can uh, pick out a bearing and navigate towards it. Um, I picked this one because it's flat. It's flat and it's plastic, so it's light and it's decently durable. It's not as durable as a metal one, but it's gonna be a lot lighter for you for your pack and it fit um, a lot easier into a pocket I wanted to put it in. So that's why I got this one and it uh, did the job. Again we have the Country Time uh, tea flavoring. Uh, really good. Loved it. Loved the taste. Um, my brother had one which was by Mio, uh, the Mio brand one. And the Mio brand one tasted like Gatorade. Apparently it had electrolytes in it. It was really delicious. Um, this one was better for like sort of a wholesome cider tasting drink uh, with our tea and our uh, rum in it. And the, um, the Mio one was better for hydration and while you're hiking. So he put in those uh, liquid tabs, um, cleaned up the water, uh, the, run, the river water, and then it tasted delicious. Um, pretty much exactly like a like a Gatorade or a Powerade type drink um, in there. Um, definitely recommend those meal um, squeeze drinks. I have a sharpener. This sharpener works really well uh, by Catco. Uh, it has both the ceramic and the uh, carbon uh, points on it um, for that. I'm definitely going to have to sharpen up my axe and my knives again. Uh, I did do a test of this. I did some kitchen knives. I did, um, or I worked through probably six kitchen knives. Um, sharpened them up within, I think, probably had to clean them up because they haven't been sharpened for, you, for years. So probably 10 poles with the carbon and then 20 poles with the um, ceramic. And when you put it in here, you can't just, you know, lightly graze it through. You have to actually put some force on it and then pull it through and uh, that way it will polish up the surfaces of your knives and uh, with those I guess total 30 poles they came out pretty sharp um, so yeah definitely recommend these um, V sharpeners whatever they're called <clears throat> for that um, I have these little sealable match kits and these are really handy um, there was a, someone who reviewed one of these I saw online and they thought that this was a striker um, but this is actually not a striker this is a ferrule rod so if you pull steel across here, it will shoot sparks. So you have the striker on the back, or the um, sort of the ferrule on the back. Um, inside of it, let's see if we can actually open this. Guess not. Inside of it, you have a reflective surface, so you can signal with it. I guess you can check your eyes with it, or something like that, if you uh, <laughs> if you wanted. Um, yeah, it's my tongue. <laughs> awesome. Um, so you can check things with it. It's pretty small to use as an actual mirror for um, looking uh, at yourself to see if you're alright. I had some matches stashed in there. I can try to do a demo of doing this uh, ferro rod here. Let's see. see that but it does uh, pull some decent sparks off of it so if you're in a bad situation and you lose your primary ferro rod um, these things are great next up folding saw I was just using works well 
cut through wood well, did everything it was supposed to, super lightweight. Um, I did put a wrapping of hockey tape on it. Oh yeah, I put some hockey. Um, I also put some hockey tape on some other equipment, which is great for grip, because uh, it was a little bit slippery, because it's just some plastic. Um, it worked well, it didn't fail, it's lightweight. If you like saws, I guess I would give it a 5 out of 5, maybe a 4 out of 5. Apparently there's some other saws that work a little better that have a bit of a curved blade, and they hook through the wood and pull through better. Um, this one is pretty much a straight blade, so I imagine those more expensive saws would work a little bit better, so probably 4 to 5 stars. Um, I just particularly don't like using saws. Um, the hatchet was much faster to chop down wood, what we're doing. If you're going to use something that you want to make tools with, so if you're going to make something that needs a flat surface, like um, maybe making a, um, a fire bow, something like that where you want to have the bottom of the spindle as flat as possible, it's good to have a saw. Um, and I actually <laughs> did try to make a uh, fire bow when I was up there, was too exhausted to use it and we hiked back, it was the last day. Um, so it's good for that, so if you like saws and you can <laughs> find this brand, I guess I'd recommend it, it's super cheap, it was like $10 Canadian, something like that. Uh, so it's probably like $8 uh, American. Uh, would I take it again? Probably not, because I just, particularly just for what I like, I didn't really like it. I just didn't like using a saw, um, so I wouldn't bring it for that reason. But if you like saws, bring one along. Uh, this. So these are some little matches that the idea I got from... I believe his, uh, he has two accounts I know of. Uh, one is Such or Suchi, something like that. And then one is Sensible Prepper. So if you check out Sensible Prepper, I'll show you how to make these. And it's basically a strike anywhere match. And it's wrapped in tissue paper. And then you take that and you soak it in candles. So I just dipped it in hot tea candles. Um, to make it melt, I had the tea candle in a pan on the stove. <clears throat> Let that heat up and melt. And then just basically dipped it right in. And then it wicks up the... Um, the wax and mix into a candle. So this feels pretty much exactly like a candle and it increases your burn time tremendously. So this was really really handy when I was up in the, uh, the mountain in the snow and I set off one of these and then put it vertical and then it basically had held the flame for quite a while and burned away um, when we were up there making that first fire. Let's see if I get it to go. Probably not because I'm <laughs> not using an actual striker. So I did have a uh, striker with me when I was up there and it was easy to, easy to use. Um, and if you read more carefully, you get these to light up. Everyone knows how strike anywhere matches work pretty well. So basically, it just turns into a little candle and uh, burns for a while. We'll uh, check in with that candle in a bit if I <laughs> remember to catch it. Let's have it burning there on the ground. <clears throat> uh, so that was great, so um, check out uh, Such's channel, or uh, Sensible Prepper, he has some really good stuff on there, and he's actually, um, like a lot of the preppers are sort of really doom and gloomy and depressing, and uh, they're all like, the world's gonna end, it's gonna be horrible, you better be prepared, and uh, Sensible Prepper, he's uh, kind of a really nice humorous guy most of the time, <laughs> so probably a fun guy to go camping with if I was ever in the States. <clears throat> um, I have another one, this one I had um, some cotton balls soaked in Vaseline. I uh, had that idea from Survival Lily. Those worked fantastic. Um, basically one or two strikes from the ferro rod and they light up instantly and burn for quite a long time. These are also great in the mountains. Um, we used these on my cousin's stove, so <clears throat> or my cousin's fire, and uh, he's the one that was doing all the work pretty much for like four or five hours trying to get his fire to maintain because it was so cold, so wet out that it was pretty much you had to keep feeding it constantly to get it to burn. It wouldn't uh, stabilize. And that's basically, I uh, gave up on my fire because we were going to have two fires, one for his shelter, one by our three of ours. And uh, we're both feeding ours. And basically, I just, after two hours or one hour, one or two hours of trying to get my fire to maintain and stabilize, it wouldn't. So I just gave up and we put all the wood into um, my cousin Steve's fire. You can see down here the match is burning away. Still going strong. Ah. It's going to reposition here. Some leftover sardines, probably eat those later. I have some off, worked great. Well, There's a lot of bugs up there and even, um, not in the snow line, but when you're down at around uh, positive four degrees, positive two degrees, something around there, there's lots of bugs that came out. Stuff worked pretty much right away, sprayed it all over my arms, put a little bit under my neck, 
and um, was careful to wipe it um, on my forehead and not get in my eyes or anything like that. Um, if you're going to be sweating a lot, maybe you don't want to wipe it on your forehead, um, but I didn't have any problems. <clears throat> and obviously Bic lighter, great whenever you need fire. I uh, kept that in a plastic bag um, just to keep it wet, or just keep it, uh, yeah, keep it wet, just keep it dry. Um, if you use those and they get wet, it's a little bit hard to strike because the, uh, the flint or something doesn't quite work as well. Um, but they do dry off and you can use them after, I've heard. Uh, then I just have some oil. Um, so some olive oil in these little uh, plastic containers. I put um, electrical tape around the top just to try to secure it, put it in a bag so it wouldn't leak. And they didn't leak and they were on the trip with me the whole time, rocking around in there. It didn't leak out. Um, so if you find these little containers in a, a home goods store, you can pick them up. They're glass, so they, I guess they do have the chance of shattering, but I didn't have any problems. And they weren't that loud or anything if you're worried about stealth. Um, I guess the way I packed them in my bag, they're decent. Um, I'd probably pick up some different containers if you can find some plastic ones of those would probably be a little bit better. But I just happened to uh, find them and they worked. Uh, we have a little whistle. It says Army. Maybe the brand is Army, I don't really know. Um, but worked well. It's not a ballless whistle, which um, is better for freezing. This one has cork in it. But as you can hear, it works fine. Didn't have to use that, thank goodness. We get lost and didn't get in any major trouble. We did get in major trouble, <laughs> but we uh, didn't have to use it to signal. Um, I believe this shovel, which is great, super lightweight. Um, originally I was gonna use it uh, for latrine holes, but when we were up there, um, it was so snowy that we just basically dig with our hands um, when we had to kind of thing. Um, didn't use it for that, we used it actually um, wanted to keep it clean so we're using it for grabbing snow, uh, uh, skimming off a little bit of the top surface and then digging down some clean fresh snow and then melting that. Uh, so for that it worked really well, super lightweight. I believe it's the same brand as this little item. This is a salt and pepper shaker and most of this gear I got at Canadian Tire. Um, but you probably get it, the same thing, same brands at Walmart or at any sort of camping or military surplus store kind of thing. Um, yeah, I got salt pepper in here which is always nice to have. Um, and then it has the caps, which come off. So the caps, um, even though it didn't have them secured or anything, they stayed pretty tight for me. Um, nothing leaked out, uh, so that's good. And just to make sure that the actual cap itself stayed on, because I was worried maybe from the rocking around the pack it would pop off, um, I just put some electrical tape around that, and that held it nice and tight. Um, you can remove it whenever you want, fill it back up. Um, and you still have access to your salt and pepper. <coughs> at a mirror for signaling and uh, this one you actually can check yourself um, if you get cut or something like that um, and you need to find out where it is if you're by yourself or not with a friend which will be a horrible deal, always travel with friends <laughs> um, but to bring it, great for signaling as well, great for checking um, to see if you're still pretty for camera <laughs> some tea, I think this is Twinnings, Earl Grey delicious, put it in uh, lots of our drinks and stuff like that Obviously tea, lightweight, good to have with you. Definitely bring the tea again. Pop can stove, amazing. <laughs> uh, I can't remember whose review I found of um, how to make these. I watched quite a few. Um, this one's made out of a monster can and monster punch, which actually, I'm not really into that flavor, but my friend drank one, had it. I just like the regular monster um, for that. And just drill some holes in it, and these are flame ports. It's dual chambered, so you pour fluid into it. I just used um, some fondue fuel and then this actually ran dry when I was testing it at home and I filled it up with <coughs> just some um, ethanol. I think I grabbed a, four liters of ethanol for six dollars, so super cheap, super lightweight, multi-use because you can use it actually um, probably on your surface for disinfecting, you don't want to use it internally really um, for that, as I mentioned before because it can damage nerves. Uh, we can also use it for not fire starting so much, but sort of when you have the flame lit, if you put it on the flame, it's going to put it out. If you put it beside the flame, once it starts to turn into vapor, it turns into vapor almost instantly, and it's going to pick up that flame and uh, dry out your wood uh, pretty well. So we used um, some of that um, up in the woods to get Steve's uh, fire a little bit hotter, let, get some things drying, and we actually used some 151. And now I love 151. So many uses for it. Uh, so the 151 again to start fire, or to... Uh, sort of pick the fire up. Um, so yeah, these little pop can stoves, great. 
definitely recommend five or five stars, maybe six or five stars because they're so cheap you make it yourself. I have some uh, fiberglass in here, which acts like a little bit of a wick. <clears throat> These are great. And I think that's everything. The candle went out wherever it is now, or the uh, match. Uh, but it did burn for quite a while. And yeah, I'll check in with you guys later. Hopefully you're having a great day. It's a beautiful day here in Langley. And see my dirty backyard, gotta clean that up later on, but you know, nature, loving it, living it. Have a great day.